So Holy Week is upon us, which means uh, the real stuff is beginning. This is the real spiritual time. And so just a word about maybe our attitude and our perspective going into Holy Week. Obviously, the, the first thing on our minds is how different everything is going to be. And um, that just stinks, and, and there's no getting around that. And that's, I think, the pain all of us share. It's, it's different, and a lot of what we love about it in many ways isn't available. We can't, can't share in those things. At the same time, there is a way where absolutely nothing's different in terms of the mysteries. What we're, what we're celebrating, what we're living through, is a mystery that is alive and real. It's, it's the Paschal mystery, the Paschal cycle. And in terms of what Jesus did, what happened, and what continues to happen in the celebration of these mysteries, nothing, 0%, absolutely nothing, is different in that regard. The mysteries are still alive and still completely active, which is why I think it's very important for us to go into this week with the expectation that God is and is going to work, that his grace is still going to be producing fruit, that we're in no way at a loss for grace this Holy Week. If anything, we have a chance to identify with the mysteries more than we typically do in our life. Uh, if, if we're really celebrating, you know, Jesus being captured, betrayed, and just losing thing after thing, shedding his life away, <clears throat> not just his blood, but his, his, you know, his disciples and his mother and all the loss that's involved. And that's like, that's what we're celebrating. Um, well, that's what we're trying to participate in, I should say. Better word, perhaps. But the reality is, every single loss we've experienced in these last weeks, every single thing that's different, every single thing that's difficult, makes us more able and better ready to celebrate the Paschal Mysteries. So I think that's a perspective to go in because I think the devil is really getting a lot of fruit out of this lie that grace will be less this year. Our share in the mystery is less this year. The power of the mystery is less this year. It's just pure, pure deception. It's false. And thankfully, we can say, wow, that's, it's, it's a relief to know that the mystery is still available to us. So I think it's important for us to go into this um, as a people strong of heart, not defeated, truly celebrating. Think about Palm Sunday. I mean, the people kind of, I guess, in a fake way were celebrating Jesus, or at least they obviously weren't committed because they, they waved the palms and then they ran away which, you know, all of us do, I, I suppose, all the time, I guess. But we can really celebrate Palm Sunday, really believe in, like, here comes the victorious king. We can really celebrate with a festivity in our hearts. The mystery can be alive, and we can know, here comes Christ, yes, to descend into darkness, but, you know, we're, we're beginning the victory here. So there's meant to be a real lively celebration in Palm Sunday. And then the other thing is to, to just be a Christian adult, well, a Christian at all, but to, to become an adult Christian, <clears throat> to have a mature faith, the constant work of that is learning how to discover grace in the midst of change and struggle and loss. So I think this celebration of Holy Week, um, all the losses that are entailed in it, it's going to be an exercise of our Christian maturity. How much can I discover God's grace in new ways, in creative ways? How can I discover him at work in me in this situation? And I think if we don't learn that skill, let's call it, or, or virtue, it's going to seriously impede or handicap our ability to be happy ever. I know it's we're all kind of saying like, boy, I'm never going to take the Eucharist for granted again. Oh, I'll never take for granted the ability to just sit with people and be close and to hug. And it's like, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, we sure will. I mean, I'm sure it's, I, I can't wait for the, for the, the festivity of, of celebration, the release of quarantine and, and the regathering of the nation, so to speak. It is going to be very joyful. And I think 
real changes can happen. It can be different and it can be better when we come out of this on the other side. But at the same time, we shouldn't be naive. Like, I give us, I don't know, three weeks and things will just start becoming routine again. And it's like, oh yeah, people. Oh yeah, the Eucharist, you know. We, we, we receive and we kind of sing the song and we just walk off and we talk to people and the day goes on. And so I think it's very easy to take things for granted despite how we feel in this moment. But I guess what's behind that is if we don't learn the ability to simply have hope and to even accept and receive our situation exactly as it is and discover God in it exactly as it is and even try to fight for some modicum of contentment in our situation exactly as it is, then even when the Eucharist returns, we'll just have new things to complain about then or just new faults or problems in our life to focus on. So I think, again, we've got a chance here to learn an absolutely necessary skill of, of adjusting and discovering grace and learning contentment um, in, our, in our present circumstances. So the, to give in to the mentality of the, the dream that I'll only be happy when and things will only be good when, you know, hmm, no, useless, never going to work. So down to the practical, enough of that. I just keep repeating myself, I feel like, but I really want to drill that point home and make sure that, that the avenues of grace are open and clear in Holy Week. They're not blocked off and that we do have hope and belief that that fruit will be available to us this week. So moving on from that, how can we try to find some ways to make this special in our homes? Mostly, I want to leave that to you guys. I mean, you have your own creative ways and you know your situation best and trust God to work through you all as parents and spouses and like he's blessed you for your vocations, how to live holiness in your life, in your home. So in some ways you'll learn that from the Lord better than, than I can ever teach you. But just a few, a few things. So first, <laughs> I remember this Seinfeld episode, um, Kramer was getting mail that he didn't want. So he decided to brick up his mailbox, the, the opening, the hole, he put bricks there. So, you know, you can't slide mail in. And Jerry goes by and he sees it and he goes, well, Kramer, where did you get the bricks? And Kramer looks at him and he says, Jerry, this whole building is made of bricks. <laughs> huh? And so I've been thinking of this for Palm Sunday. We're like, well, can we come pick up the palms? Can we distribute the palms? How can we do the palms? And it's like, hey, you know what? The whole world's made of palms. Look at this. I walked two feet out of my house and I broke off a branch and here you go. Here's a palm, right? And realistically, 0% of the celebrations of Holy Week in, G oh, I shouldn't say celebrations, the events of Holy Week, zero of them took place in the temple, right? You're in the garden, you're in the upper room, you're in... Um, wherever it was that the, the Romans had Jesus, you're, you know, you're on Golgotha. Those are all outside events. And again, it's not at all to downplay the church and, and all of this, but it's to say like the original palms, people just picked up what was around them. They broke them off the trees or whatever, and they waved them and said, hey, hey here comes Jesus. Get some stuff and swing it around. This is great. Here comes the king, you know? So, so I think don't, again, not to be defeated by simple things like just go get a branch. You want a blessed one? Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, I ask you as much as you desire uh, to bless all the trees of Wenatchee, all the branches that people will go break off. Your blessing is not limited to space. You know those branches. You see them. You see the trees. Please let your blessing descend upon those branches, upon the people who use them, their families, and their homes. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Bam, there they are. They're, they're, go get your blessed branches. They're out there. That's, okay, done with that. <laughs> New issue. What else can you do? I don't know. Like, so what are, what, are the, what are the things we celebrate? You know, you've got, in Holy Week, you have candles. You've got fire. Is there a way to do some fire somehow in your, in your house, outside your house? I don't know. Maybe parental, you know, guidance or whatever, but we can figure something out. Candles, those are all over the place. All the great signs are still available. You guys touching each other in your house? Well, wash each other's feet. Like, the symbols are still there. You can find a prayerful way to, to still enter into this stuff. But maybe just my one little 
uh, a thought on it. When I was in the seminary with the Benedictines in, in Christ the King up in Canada, just a great place, really just loved it and enjoyed it. Holy Week was so great there. Um, it was so alive. And, and part of it is because it just, it penetrates every single part of the life. Um, everything you're doing is different because of Holy Week. You know, even the same things like eating. You might be eating different foods. Or maybe you're eating in silence or with someone doing a table reading. Or, or um, you know, you adjust the lighting. You adjust the music you're singing. Or the music you're listening to or not listening to. You kind of just look at all the little um, uh, elements of your life and see what does this look like in Holy Week? How do I do this in a way that's conducive of Holy Week? How do I kind of find the sacred in this? How do I alter this or, or transform this so that I'm doing it in a different way? So, again, I'm not saying we don't miss the church. I'm not saying we won't be really happy when we can come back to, to celebrate, you know, with the sacraments with one another. But it's just to say that it doesn't mean that this can't be a very, very good Holy Week, that God cannot be very alive and active. And bless you all, bless us all as, as families in a special way. So open up our hearts, open up our minds, get creative, get prayerful, and let God give us uh, the Holy Week He has planned for us. And let all of our sacrifice draw us into it in a more real way.